Welcome to our daily briefing on the status and response measures on coronavirus in the country. Yesterday, we announced stringent measures in Nairobi's Isli Estate and Old Town Mombasa in a bid to curb the rising numbers of those testing positive for coronavirus. We are aware that the measures may cause some inconveniences, but we are appealing to you all for understanding. These directives are aimed at protecting all of us. We have observed that arising from the directives, some people have decided to sneak out of these areas Because if you happen to be infected unknowingly, then you have just transferred the problem to another area. What you have done is to promote the spread of the disease in this area that you have relocated to. And I want to address uh, the measures that were taken, particularly in Isli and in Old Town, Mombasa. I want to address my fellow Muslim brethren, because they are the majority in these neighborhoods. Indeed, I want to start by wishing them Ramadan Karim. This is the holy month of Ramadan. It is a month of worship, and generally when things are normal, it is a month that brings people together. But it is also a month that brings the best out of people. And this holy month, everybody strives to do the best that they can be in every way they can. And I want to look at this in the context of the pandemic that we are facing right now. You also know that in extreme difficult times, it is also the time that brings the best out of people. So we have an opportunity here to bring the best out of ourselves on those two fronts of the religion as well as the pandemic itself that faces us. And I want to narrate the hadith about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who said, if you hear that there is plague in a land, do not enter it. And if you are in a land and it is visited by plague, do not leave it. That is a, a real hadith that is there. And it is basically the cardinal principle in public health control of contagious diseases. That is infectious diseases spread uh, through community spread. It's the basic principle. It is as if this principle was borrowed from, from the religion. And I want to say that we, if we look at this, it means the measures that have been put in place in these two areas are meant to prevent people, one, from moving out and spreading that, the disease. And remember, this is a disease that is new, that we learn something every day about it. This is not a disease that has clear signs that we can identify who's carrying it or not. It is, it is a silent disease in many ways. We have kept talking about the number of people who are asymptomatic. They do not dis show any signs or symptoms of this disease, yet they are carriers and are shedding the virus. Under such circumstances, it is safe to assume that each and every one of us is infected. If we make that assumption, then we need to adhere to the only weapon that we have of controlling this disease, which is all the measures that we have been talking about. 
social distancing, physical distancing, hygiene, wearing your masks, keeping to yourselves and avoiding gatherings, staying at home when you can do that, those are the only measures that will break the cycle of transmission. As I address these two areas of East Lee and Old Town, I want to appeal to everybody to please remain within these zones that have been marked as restricted areas of movement. We are aware that there are, since the announcement was made yesterday, that people are sneaking out in one way or the other and going to other neighborhoods, South B, South C, and others. As I started off by saying this brings the best in us, remember, with a silent, silent disease like this, one can be a silent killer. By moving out, there are the chances that you will be spreading this disease to others. You may not know that you are a carrier, but we have been telling you, you must assume you are a carrier because of the nature of transmission of this disease. Therefore, if you are leaving a place that is already a high-risk zone and going to another uh, neighborhood, you are spreading the disease. And that should be on your conscience. Equally, and I want to again remind you of the, the, the hadith that I mentioned. Equally, if you are in a place that is visited by the plague, you do not leave that place. If you hear there is a land where there is a plague, you do not enter that land. So, for those family members or community members who are welcoming those who are coming from the high-risk areas that we have earmarked, you are also placing yourself at, as in danger. Placing yourself in danger by bringing to your home, even if they are your kin, people who may be able to spread the disease to you. We therefore are appealing again to those neighboring communities that may have kin and relatives within the earmarked areas that when you bring in people who are coming from these areas, you are putting yourself at risk and we want you to desist from that. Those who are within these areas, we ask you to please remain in there because when you're in there, uh, the health workers are in there, you will watch out for whatever symptoms. If you feel that you have any symptoms or need medical care, you will be able to contact the healthcare workers. You can call 719 and healthcare workers will come in there to attend to you, to test you, and to see what course of action that they will take on you. Yesterday, the CS also talked about the issue of, of quarantine. We know that initially, people were a little bit reluctant to present themselves for the mass testing and even to report cases because of the fear that once you are positive, you are put in quarantine and so are all members of your household. And then you, and they were afraid also of the costs of that quarantine. The cabinet secretary yesterday made it clear that testing and quarantine will costs will be borne by the government. Therefore, it is important that people do come out for the mass testing because it is the only way that we can be able to fight this virus when we know where it is hiding. That is when we can go in there and fight it. And the only way we can know where it is hiding is by coming out and being able to test. Easily and Old Town have become hot spots where it is circulating within the community. As we continue with our enhanced targeted testing in other areas and we establish a level of community transmission that now needs some further action, you can be sure that further action will be taken in these places as well. Therefore, if anybody has the notion that 
the, 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 the restrictions placed on these two areas are by design. I think that is not the case. It is because they are hot areas that need to be contained. And the same will apply to any other area where our numbers show that some action needs to be taken. I'm therefore appealing to Kenyans to report to the authorities any persons who recently moved into their neighborhoods. We should be our brother's keeper. To the residents of Isli and Old Town Mombasa, I want to remind you that it should not be business as usual. The measures we outlined yesterday must be strictly adhered to. Together with the other guidelines meant to mitigate this disease. Such measures include washing of hands, maintaining social distancing, observing high standards of hygiene, wearing of face masks, and sanitizing where possible. These are practices that will help to bring back normalcy in those areas. And I think the more we stick to these measures, the chances is the earlier we are able to get out of this problem. Let me reiterate the issue of truck drivers. As I mentioned yesterday, all cross-border truck drivers are required to be tested at the point of origin of their journey and obtain a corona-free certificate at least 48 hours before departure. This arrangement has been arrived at as part of an agreement between the East African community members on COVID-19 protocol. So this, there will be reciprocal arrangements between the states, in our case here between, for now, Uganda and Tanzania, where the major traffic is, in terms of re requirement for this corona-free certificate upon arriving at a border point. Let me now give you the statistics for the last 24 hours. Out of 632 samples tested over the last 24 hours, 25 people have tested positive for coronavirus disease. This brings the total number of those who have tested positive to 607. This number is growing. As you can see, and we must do all that we can to stop it from escalating. Fellow Kenyans, from this number, 22 are Kenyans, one a Ugandan, one a Tanzanian, and one a Chinese national. Distribution of these cases is as follows. 17 are from Nairobi, two from Wajir, two from Kajiado County, and one each from Mombasa, Migori, Isielo, and Nakuru. Isielo now becomes the latest county to record a COVID-19 case. This brings to 18 the number of counties so far affected. The cases from Nairobi are spread in the following estates. Isli is again leading with nine, Kawangware two, Parklands two, Riruta one, South Sea one, Umoja one, and Juja Road one. The one case in Mombasa, and that's good news to see that we have picked up uh, only one case in Mombasa this time is from Likoni, while that of Nakuru is from Solai. The age range is from eight years for the youngest to 73 years for the oldest. And in terms of gender, 21 are males and four are females. It's a pattern that we have seen repeat itself, more males than females. On a positive note, we have today recorded an additional seven new discharges or recoveries. This brings the total number of those who have recovered from the disease to 197. 
I am equally saddened to inform you that we have lost three other patients. Two are from Nairobi, while one is from Mombasa. This now brings to 29 the number of people lost to this disease. As I conclude, I want to inform you that the government has made plans to evacuate Kenyans who had traveled to India for treatment. I think when the measures of travel were put in place, we had a number of Kenyans who had sought treatment in India being held up there. The government has now made arrangements for their return. They are expected to land this evening at JKIA and staff from the Ministry of Health will be available there to facilitate their arrival and their subsequent self-quarantine within their homes. If you recall, the Cabinet Secretary yesterday said that these Kenyans who are coming back from treatment in India will be quarantined in their homes under the supervision of their doctors. I thank you.